Welcome everybody to our virtual college fair for the Southern Association for College Admissions Counseling. My name is Lucy Watt. I am one of the facilitators tonight with StriveScan. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I do just have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Um, you as the attendee can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Um, please be sure that you make note of what school you are asking the question to so you can just do like at uh, Rollins College, my question is so on and so forth. Um, this is just one of many sessions being um, happening tonight. So if you are looking to schedule or sign up for some more, there are plenty more opportunities happening throughout the evening. Um, so be sure to sign up for those sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same web, uh, website where you registered. Um, and before we get started, we'd also like to take a moment to thank our fair sponsor tonight, Cambridge Assessment International Education. And now I would like to turn it over to our presenters. First up, we have Sacred College, Sacred Heart College, excuse me. Hi, thank you, Lucy. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. All right. All right, here we go. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, my name is Kim Perrette. I'm Director of Regional Admissions at Sacred Heart University. We're located in Fairfield, Connecticut. And for those of you who don't know where that is, it's actually about an hour outside of New York City. So um, a really awesome location uh, for going to college. So I'm going to start with uh, a little academic overview and some facts about Sacred Heart. So we offer five different colleges of study. We have arts and sciences. We have a college of education, college of business and technology, um, a college of nursing, which is really um, a very popular major uh, at Sacred Heart. Also our college of health professions. And we offer two campuses that are only about a quarter of a mile from each other uh, with about 5,200 undergraduate students, um, about 8,000 in our total student population, including grad students. We offer Division I athletics. Um, we're a big, big, big athletic school. We have about 33 teams, about 30 club sports teams, and of course, intramurals um, for everyone to join in on. We're ranked number 13 in the country for community service. Our, our students love to give back to the community and number 10 for happiest students. We offer individualized attention in the classroom. Our average uh, class size is about 22 students. So I wanna just uh, talk briefly about our College of Health Professions. That is one of our uh, really popular majors along with business and nursing. Um, there are three undergrad programs in this college, but most importantly, we have graduate health professions programs. You can see them all listed here, including that doctorate in physical therapy. And these programs for an incoming freshman are actually available to be pre-admit programs. So you can come in as a freshman and know exactly uh, where you're going to be in six or seven years, um, you know, provided that you have the appropriate GPA and health and science courses. So um, one thing that's so important at Sacred Heart is to balance your academic activities uh, with your extracurricular activities. So we have a lot for students to get involved in. I already mentioned our athletics. Um, we're a big school spirit, um, sports related uh, university, uh, but we also have a lot of different areas like uh, uh, Greek life, like performing arts. We offer band, dance, choral, performing arts, the um, theater and acting, uh, musical theater. So a lot of different areas um, there for students to be involved in. Our campus ministry, of course, we are a private Catholic university. So that's very important to us as well. Uh, many volunteer programs, as I mentioned before. Uh, for study abroad, when there's no COVID happening, we offer um, uh, two campuses, uh, one in Luxembourg and one in Ireland, and also another 60 or so countries that we work with. Living at Sacred Heart, we are a growing university and we have many new residence halls that are really beautiful and it's allowing our students to be able to live on campus all four years, which is super convenient. Um, you are required two years to live on campus. So please go and check out our uh, YouTube videos and our website videos of our beautiful residence halls. And these are just some, um, some of our newer additions, uh, our buildings that we've added in the last few years 
years. As I said, we are growing. So we have our, our cute little diner there, that photo. We have a, um, a new radio station, a new athletic center, a, a actually new campus. Um, I mentioned the two campuses before, but if you look at that little picture there, uh, over here of the West Campus, you'll see that little funny looking building. That's actually a hotel where our students in uh, the hospitality industry can actually work and do their internship on campus. And the middle photo here is just a photo of those new residence halls that are up and coming and also a new uh, theater out in the community. So we're really, um, uh, it's a great time to be at Sacred Heart because of all the growth. And here's my information again. Um, again, I work with the students from the Southern States and I'd love to talk with you more. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. And uh, next we will be hearing from Evergreen State College. Hello everybody, my name is Carl Forbes. Welcome to the Evergreen State College. I'm going to share my screen also. All right, uh, my my email address and my telephone number, contact information is on the on this screen. It'll also be uh, on the last screen. So bear with me as I introduce you to your way of the world. Uh, Evergreen was founded in 1967. Uh, however, we started operations in 1971, so that is 50 years ago. So we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. Very excited about that. We are a public college and one of six pub public colleges in the state of Washington. And to give you an idea of our campus, our campus is really a wooded campus, a beautiful place. Uh, about 200 of those acres are developed for residence halls and academic buildings, and the rest is unspoiled forest. So going to Evergreen is like uh, attending college in a forest. We also have a five acre organic farm and uh, we are right at the bottom of the Puget Sound. So our campus has beach access and we have a lot of opportunities for marine biology and things like that that are associated with that beach access. Our students come from 48 states and 18 different countries. 32% of our students identify as students of color and 26% of our students um, are from states outside of, out of Washington. That's including our international students. We have lots of clubs and activities for students uh, to be involved in. Many of them were created by students and run by students. We are a division three athletic program. We have uh, sports, soccer, volleyball, basketball, and track and field. And we have both baccalaureate and master's degrees. Our most popular program is environmental science, which makes sense with um, almost a thousand acres of woodland. Your, that classroom is literally the world right outside the building. Evergreen is really unique in several different ways. I'd like to point out a couple of the ways in which Evergreen is unique. First of all, you get to choose your own path at Evergreen. You don't choose a major which means that there's no list of courses that you have to take in order to uh, complete your degree requirements. In fact, um, the, way we, uh, the way we count or how we um, mark your progress is by the number of credits that you accumulate. And once you accumulate 180 credit hours, then you're done. Uh, the way you distinguish your degrees is what we call emphases. Most students have at least one emphasis, but you're not required to have one. A lot of our students will have two emphases. Um, and I'll tell you about how that works in a minute, but your pathway in terms of your degree, you either are getting a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. And there are some requirements on how you get a Bachelor of Science versus a Bachelor of Arts. You can see those on the screen. The second thing that's really unique about Evergreen is your course schedule, because most students at Evergreen only have one course at a time. But those courses that students take are interdisciplinary, they're multi-subject, they're team taught by uh, two or three different faculty members and are a full-time program. So for 10 weeks, you'll take one course that might be 16 hours a week. So in this model that you see on the screen, uh, this course is called Business Biology and Sustainable Solutions. In this particular course, you're studying biology, financial management, business and sustainability all in that one course. You get to really dig deep in this topic of business biology and sustainable solutions because you're looking at it from all of these different angles. 
Remember, dig deep. I'll get back to that in a little while. Uh, we have other learning opportunities. Uh, we do have study abroad. Some of our study abroad programs are directly in the course that you're taking. So you might spend six of, of your weeks um, in Olympia, Washington, and then the others in a different country like Chile or China or something like that. So uh, the, the course literally takes you right to the other country. Uh, there's also some other opportunities where you can uh, combine with some consortiums and those will take you out of the country. We also have opportunities for individual learning contracts where you contract right with a faculty member what your learning objectives are and you create your own course. Same, similar with a student originated study where you go to faculty saying, this is what you wanna study and you will work on that, that content together. And then we also offer internships. Uh, we're in the state of Washington. It's the capital of, of uh, we're in Olympia, I'm sorry, in the capital of Washington. So there's lots of opportunities for political internships as well as community-based uh, community organization internships. The next thing that's really unique about Evergreen is the fact that you don't earn letter grades at Evergreen. At Evergreen, instead of getting an A or a B or a C, you're gonna get a written narrative evaluation. And that really uh, aligns how you did or compares how you did in that course with the learning objectives that the professors are going to set out at the beginning of the course. So you've got this system of evaluations where the faculty evaluates you, you get this narrative evaluation, and you also narrow, uh, nav sorry, evaluate yourself, and you write yourself an evaluation on how you measured, how you felt you measured in that course, and then you also evaluate your faculty on how they um, presented the course to you. So, you. so this constant loop of feedback is always happening at Evergreen. You're also um, creating an academic statement, which becomes a part of your transcript that talks about why you took the courses you did. Remember, you're not required to take the, the different courses that you take, so they're your choice, and you've got to uh, justify those. Uh, in admissions, we have a holistic review. So in that holistic review, we're looking at um, essays that you might write or letters of recommendation or other things like that. Um, we have two different ways to apply. One is the common application and one is the application that we have on our website and you see our website there. Uh, in order for your application to be complete, you have to have uh, complete your application and submit it along with a $50 application fee. We also need your official transcripts or if you're a GED student, we need your official GED report that has your test scores on it. That's gonna be very important. And your ACT or SAT scores. Um, you, you can write an essay that is optional unless you're applying uh, test optional. If you are applying test optional, then your application statement becomes a requirement. Uh, just to give you an idea of cost, the total cost of attendance for Evergreen is just over $45,000. That includes room and boards, books and fees, and that kind of thing. We have lots of scholarships to offer. Uh, as a student coming from out of state, the lowest scholarship you can receive uh, or our Scholastic Achievement Award is $5,000. The highest is $12,000. Um, if by chance you're uh, from one of the Western states, um, we do also have a $16,000 scholarship for those students that are part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange. Um, but most of the people that are watching will probably be in that 5,000 to 12,000 Scholastic Achievement Award range. And then we also have Evergreen Foundation scholarships that range from 300 to 6,000, which is an open scholarship competition. And, and to win those, you have to write the essay of your life. So start writing those essays. Again, we're located in uh, Olympia, Washington. And just to give you an idea of where that is in relation to other things, we're about uh, 30 minutes from Tacoma, Washington, 60 minutes from Seattle and the airport that you'll use when you come to Olympia, about two hours from Portland and about three hours to Canada, about three and a half hours to get to Vancouver. So uh, that's it for me. Again, my name is Carl Forbes. My email address is forbesc at evergreen.edu. And I look forward to having you dig deep like the gooey duck when you come to Evergreen. Great, thanks so much. Next up, we'll hear from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Don't know how to stop share. I don't know how to do it, where is it? Okay, so hello everyone, my name is Kaylin. Um, like Lucy mentioned, I'm with the University of Alabama in Huntsville. I'm one of our admissions counselors here.
Oops, it's not what I meant to click. So just a little bit of background about UH. We were founded in 1950 originally, um, partnered with the University of Alabama and Tuscaloosa, as well as the University of Alabama and Birmingham. And so we became our own autonomous independent campus in 1969. So we are completely separate universities, completely separate scholarship programs and application processes as well. We are a medium sized campus. So we have about 500 acres um, and about 10,000 students that we just hit in fall 2020. So that was our goal. So that was pretty exciting for us. Um, just a couple of fun facts about UAH. We are ranked number one in Alabama for early career pay. So that's really exciting. Our average starting salary for UAH graduates is over 57,000. And that's regardless of your major, what you'd be interested in studying. So that's a great number salary to have in general, but especially starting right out of college, it's a great number to have. We are also ranked the number one return on investment for both in-state and out-of-state students for the state of Alabama. Um, so what that means is basically the money you're putting in for your, your tuition, you're getting right back out of college as a, as a graduate. So that's really exciting as well. And then we also have 16 NCAA sport programs. One of those is a division one men's ice hockey team. So we're the only division one men's ice hockey team in the entire Southeast. Those games are technically off campus at the Von Braun Center, which is about five minutes um, away from campus in downtown Huntsville, but those games are still at no additional cost for students to attend. Our nickname is the Rocket City in Huntsville because we do have the space and Rocket Center located right down the road from us. So that's a pretty cool resource for students to be able to get co-ops and internships with, as well as just a really cool place to hang out and explore in the city of Huntsville. We do have seven academic colleges with over 100 areas of study. So there's arts, humanities, social sciences, business, education, engineering, um, honors college is their own um, entity as well, as well as nursing and science. And then just a couple of programs that make us unique. We do have aerospace engineering. We are ranked fifth in the state of Alabama for our aerospace program, which is a neat program to have. Um, we have a lot of resources for astronomy, astrophysics, and meteorology, since we do have um, a couple of resources across the street for research, as well as um, cybersecurity, which is a newer program for us over the past year, and digital animation. We are ranked number one in the state of Alabama for our digital animation program, and that is definitely a growing field within not only the state, but the nation. We do have small class sizes with an average of 35 students per course, so they're pretty tiny. Um, we do have a student to faculty ratio of 18 to 1, so it's very easy to not only connect with your professors, but your classmates and be able to ask questions while you're in class and outside of class. We have tons of opportunities for internships, co-ops, and undergraduate research because we do have um, Cummings Research Park right across the street from UAH, which is the second largest university-related research park in the nation, fourth largest in the entire world. So plenty of opportunities to be able to get some of those experiences and hands-on experience as well during your undergraduate. We do have over 185 student run organizations, so it's very easy to get involved on campus, whether you're looking to be more academically focused in some honor societies um, or Greek life. We do have um, a couple different sororities and fraternities on campus as well. And then most of our organizations are comprised of our special interest groups. So we do have um, a hammocking club on campus. We have a beekeeping club on campus, all kinds of different things that you could get involved with. And then we do also have sweet style living. So you would have your own private bedroom. You'd share a bathroom with one other person and then you share the whole living area um, and kitchenette with your three other suite mates so they're very spacious and very nice um, no sharing anything except for that bathroom and that little um, living area as far as our admissions process goes we do require first-time freshmen to have a 2.9 high school gpa and that can be unweighted or a weighted gpa and then we also do require a composite score on the act of a 20 or the equivalent for the sat if you prefer that test for our application process, we do require a $30 application fee. Um, you can apply usually the August of your senior year is when our application opens, and it, we do have a rolling admissions process. So as soon as you put in that application and get your required materials in, we will automatically send you um, an email with our decision and then a letter as well. Um, besides the application fee, we do also need an official copy of a high school transcript, as well as official scores from ACT or SAT. We do offer some pretty good academic scholarships, which I'll show you in that grid in just a second, but they are based off of your 
um, GPA and your test scores from high school. And you can see that here for our out-of-state academic scholarships. Um, we do have an in-state academic scholarship grid on our website as well. But for the out-of-state one, um, starts at a 3.0 GPA and a 25 ACT. For our in-state, it ranges from a 21 ACT and a 3.0 GPA. Um, and you can see they range from all across the board and some of them do include housing as well. So we will take ACT scores up until April 15th of your senior year. And um, you can continue taking those tests and updating those tests as needed. So at this point, um, like I mentioned, you can apply for admission during your senior year during that August period. So if you are a senior now, I definitely recommend applying to UAH if you have not already. Um, and if you are a junior or a sophomore or someone a little bit younger, then I definitely recommend coming and visiting campus. Um, we do have virtual visits and in-person visits right now. So it's totally up to you what you're comfortable with with COVID right now. Um, but you can schedule them online. We have them Mondays through Fridays every week. Um, and then you can also schedule a meeting with me if you have specific specific questions about UAH. And then we do have several upcoming events coming up, whether that's in person, um, near a town near you, we have a couple of dinners and other things coming up that are going to be limited with COVID, um, or we do have some on campus events coming up as well. And then of course, follow us on social media if you're interested in hearing more about UAH or any updates coming up. So thank you guys so much for your time. It was nice meeting you um, virtually. And I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you. Uh, next up, we will hear from Rollins College. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Christina, and I'm one of the admission counselors at Rollins. Um, I will be sharing just some information about us. We are located um, in the heart of Winter Park um, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we are a liberal arts institution that was founded in 1885. And so we are the oldest college in the state of Florida. Um, and in terms of our liberal arts curriculum and our goals for our students is we want them to be well-rounded. You would of course choose your major with, um, you know, and, and receive that expertise within your major. Um, but you then also are gonna get that broad interdisciplinary background. Um, and develop skills that employers are really finding important in the workforce, including creative problem solving, critical thinking skills, the ability to read, write, communicate effectively, um, all ways to just enhance your marketability when you graduate from Rollins. Now we are, um, this picture here is of campus, so you can see that we are abutted by Lake Virginia, um, and it's uh, just a really beautiful campus. If you do have the opportunity, I highly recommend coming to visit. Um, what you can see on the other side of this image, though, is the downtown historic Winter Park area. Um, it is an extension of campus for our students. They have the ability to um, just sort of enjoy restaurants, cafes, boutiques, farmers markets, museums. Um, and then, of course, Orlando is just 15 minutes down the road. You can see it all the way in the back um, middle of the picture here, um, which then allows for further opportunities for our students in terms of um, internships and uh, job opportunities while they're at Rollins and even after. Now, in terms of our student makeup, we're pretty small, just over 2,000 students with about 50% coming from within Florida, 40% are out of state, and 10% are international, representing over 60 different nations. 27% of students do also identify as a student of color. Um, we are very mission driven at Rollins and one of our tenants is that we want our students to be global citizens. And so you're really going to get that diverse thought and experience just based on the experience, the experience of our students, our faculty and our staff. Now, the way that we are approaching our um, liberal arts curriculum is in a 21st century approach through our Rollins Gateway. And so this is really with the understanding that no single solution is going to be the way that we solve 21st century problems. Um, and so our gateway specifically does stand on three pillars, future proof education, liberal arts and action, and then our Rollins results. So just some academic information, we offer over 60 different academic programs, majors, minors, pre-professional tracks. Our top three would be biology, business, and psychology. Um, our average class size is 17 with a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, um, which definitely lends itself to that strong commitment that we've received for undergraduate teaching, ranked number one. 
Um, outside of academics, our students are also just heavily engaged in their student orgs, in studying abroad, in community service. Um, we have over 100 student orgs that comprises Greek life, um, student government, our debate team. We have um, 21 uh, Division II athletics in the Sunshine State Conference. We have clubs and intramural sports as well, with esports being one of our newest to start this past fall semester. In terms of our Rollins results, um, this data was from the class of 2018, 97% did state that they were engaged um, in the workforce, graduate school or volunteer service 12 months after graduating. And so we're really excited to see our um, graduates going on to pursue their goals and their dreams. The lists here just include companies and graduate schools they've gone on to. For anyone potentially interested in getting their MBA, I do always like to note our Crummer Business School um, that we have right on the same campus and you can do an accelerated program. Um, it's a five year program where you would then graduate at the end with both your BA and your MBA. And we are also offering um, some accelerated opportunities for our other graduate study programs. Now, in terms of applying, um, three ways to apply, the common application, the coalition application, or our own Rollins application. There is no fee to apply, so it's up to you um, which of those three you prefer to use. We do take a holistic review. We are also a test optional school. We have been since 2008, and so you um, are not gonna be penalized for applying without scores. You still have access to merit scholarship as well. If you do plan to submit scores, we do super score the SAT. Um, but not the ACT. And if you submit both an SAT and an ACT score, we will take the higher of the two. Our average core and weighted GPA is about a 3.4. Um, and that is again, unweighted and only looking at your core academic courses. There's the essay portion, which is my favorite part as a counselor, just because it's really where you get to shine as the student. We really do also take note of your involvement. Rollins students are very engaged on their community um, and in their clubs and orgs. And so this is a great way for us to see how you spend your time currently. And we only um, require one letter of recommendation from your guidance or college counselor. We do offer both early decision and regular decision for our deadlines. Um, and so for the first deadline, the November 15th, we do both have an early decision round one or just our priority scholarship deadline for regular decisions. So I highly recommend applying by that first deadline if you can. Early decision is binding, so it does mean if we accept you, we expect that you'll attend. Um, and then for that priority scholarship, again, like I mentioned, that's also gonna be consideration for our Alphonse scholarship, which is full room board and tuition. Um, just some stats on financial aid, 95% of students do receive some form of aid. We offer partial scholarships that range from 10 to 32,000 and you're automatically considered for those when you apply. And for Florida residents, we do accept Florida prepaid, Florida Bright Futures, and the EASE grant. Um, in terms of need-based aid, we would then just need you to submit the FAFSA to us. Um, so thanks for listening about Rollins and if you do have more questions, please put them in the chat. Great, thanks so much. Uh, next up, we'll hear from Illinois Institute of Technology. Awesome, thank you. Just give me one second. Awesome, I hope you all can see my presentation okay. Uh, welcome to the presentation today. This will be a presentation going through some general information about Illinois Institute of Technology. My name is Diana and I'm an admission counselor here and my role is to help you throughout the admission process. So if you have any questions after this presentation, definitely feel free to contact me. So to start off, Illinois Tech is Chicago's only STEM focused university located in Chicago, Illinois. We are home to over 45 majors such as engineering, computer related sciences, lab sciences, architecture, business and more, uh, most popular being STEM related majors. Our student body has around 3000 undergraduate students uh, and we represent all 50 states and over 80 countries. Uh, academic experience, you can see that over 80% of our classes are 40 students or less. So we do have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, which equates to smaller classroom sizes. 100% uh, of our class classes are taught by professors and there are other stats below. Uh, you can see some of the hallmarks of our education. So Illinois Tech definitely thrive in opportunities and research experiences. Undergraduate students can get involved in research as soon as their first semester of their freshman year here. Uh, all of our professors actually participate in their own research, so you definitely have a lot of opportunities to do some research uh, for whatever you are passionate about. 
uh, examples listed down below, uh, you can definitely do more research on our research using our website. Interprofessional projects, that's definitely a hallmark of our education, um, as, as well as known as um, IPRO projects. This is a required projects course for our students, allowing you to learn in an interdisciplinary environment, uh, creating projects to tackle real world problems. So you can see some examples listed down below as well. Um, and then Elevate. Elevate is an umbrella organization that connects our students to different out of classroom experiences, such as internships, co-ops, studying abroad, competitions, short courses, uh, you really name it. This is really unique to our university and really puts an emphasis on our students' experiences. So moving into campus life, we have over 150 student organizations, any org you can really think of. Uh, we have nonprofit, academic, religious, um, intramural athletics. Uh, we are really big on esport teams. Uh, we have a lot of students loving to do their video gaming in our on our campus. Uh, we are an NCAA Division III school, so we have a lot of athletic teams on our campus as well, as well as Greek life if you're interested in fraternities and sororities. For our residential experiences, 70% of our students live on campus and we provide housing for all four years. So you are not expected to look for housing in Chicago, uh, which I know could be a little bit difficult. Um, so you can see that all of the residential halls are listed there. Um, and if you wanted to do some more information and more digging around in our residential halls, you can have a take a look in our virtual tours. Those are available if you wanted to see what the inside of a dorm room looks like. So talking a little bit about our mission process, we are on Common App. Uh, if you are first year students, here are some of the required materials. Uh, we definitely require your high school transcripts, uh, one letter of recommendation, up to three if you would like, but we only require one, um, as well as a completed Common App application, of course. Uh, some optional items you can look at. Uh, we are going test optional, so if you have your ACT or SAT scores, you can definitely submit them or not, depending on you, as well as portfolio, resume, any related work that you really want to emphasize in your application. Uh, moving into class profile, you can see the middle 50% of our mid freshman body are getting a weighted GPA of 4.0 to 4.36. Uh, we do take weighted GPAs uh, and then ACT and SAT ranges are listed there as well. Keep in mind, we only give ranges to our students because we do holistically review your application. So taking into account your experiences, your um, other materials on your application. Um, Keep in mind, we do put an emphasis on your transcript. So if you're applying for like a STEM major, uh, then we are mainly looking for those math and science courses that you're taking, making sure you're doing well so that you can succeed here. If you're going for architecture, if you're taking any design courses, that's awesome. Trig is awesome as well. Uh, and any examples over there. Um, as for admission timelines, we do have a priority deadline, priority scholarship deadline of November 15th. So if you're applying for fall 2022, um, keep in mind the November 15th, 2021 deadline, mark that on your calendar. Uh, if you apply before or by this deadline, you are eligible for some of our full tuition scholarships. Um, overall, we are on a rolling admission cycle though. Uh, so you can, all the, you can apply all the way up to August 1st of 2021 for fall 2021, for example. We are obviously not encouraging our students to apply this late uh, because of financial aid packaging, housing and course selections and all of that. Um, as for first year scholarships, all of our admitted first year students are automatically considered for the HEALD scholarship or the international scholarship if you're an international student, uh, regardless of when you apply in the mission cycle. Uh, you can see some of the other scholarships, they require different deadlines. So that November 15th deadline you should definitely be focusing on as well as January 15th if you're a part of robotics. Um, all of these information, all of the information about our additional scholarships are on our website. So definitely uh, look on our website for more um, additional application materials or additional information about these scholarships. And then some stats I'd like to point out, we are number one in Illinois for return on investment uh, and number 39 in the un um, number 39 in the nation for best value university. Um, and then also, of course, all of our students are considered for scholarships ranging from $10,000 all the way up to full tuition. So I definitely encourage you to apply to see what you can receive from us. Uh, and then last thing, we do have pre-college programs at our school. Um, our summer programs uh, provide engagement with Illinois Tech graduates, uh, as well as professors from our school. Um, this we, we have a lot of hands-on experiences in our pre-college programs that mimics undergraduate studies at Illinois Tech. It looks great on an application if you're applying to us or other universities, as well as having a few courses that count for college credit. 
Uh, I know that was short and sweet, uh, so definitely feel free to contact me if you have any questions or any questions in the chat box. And thank you all so much for listening. Thank you. And then finally, we will hear from University of Michigan. All right. Thank you all for having me. I am pulling up my PowerPoint and hopefully you all can see my screen at this point. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amy Ruff, and thank you all for joining us today for the SACA College Fair. Um, I'm a regional recruitment coordinator for the University of Michigan. Um, I do want to remind everyone we are able to take questions. So if you do want to submit your question at the bottom of the screen, make sure you do that and we can answer them as we go. Um, but I'm very excited you all are here um, and having an interest in the University of Michigan. Um, so at the University of Michigan, we are actually located in Southeast Michigan in the city of Ann Arbor. We are often recognized as one of the best college cities and the best cities to live in in the US. Um, it has a wonderful blend of student life, a vibrant town life just beyond campus. Um, Ann Arbor, we have a number of accolades. Um, we're considered one of the most educated cities in America where over 72% of adults actually have a bachelor's degree um, and 43% of the people in Ann Arbor actually have advanced degrees. Um, we're also considered one of the best college towns to live in, as well as one of the best cities to live in, um, and the number seven best city for entrepreneurs. We attract students from all over the city and all over the world, or all over the country and all over the world, um, which contributes to our diverse student population. We have an undergraduate population of about 31,000 students coming from every county in Michigan and from all 50 states and over, over 122 countries across the globe. Um, our students are not only geographically diverse, but also culturally and racially diverse as well. 16% of our undergraduate students are first generation college students. Um, and it's this diverse population of students that contributes to us being ranked as one of the top global universities in the world. Last year, received, um, we received around 65,000 applications to the University of Michigan to fill an incoming class of 7,100 students. You can see the average GPA and test scores um, listed on the screen, but keep in mind our admissions process is holistic and we are evaluating both quantitative and qualitative factors when considering students for admission. We have a strong commitment to our undergraduate students in providing them educational opportunities through 14 undergraduate schools and colleges on campus with over 280 degree options to choose from and ensuring that they have the ability to connect with their faculty members by keeping our student to faculty ratio fairly low at 15 to one. Beyond the classroom, we do provide students with the ability to engage in enrichment opportunities such as study abroad in typical years, um, project-based teams, including options to explore entrepreneurship with over 30 student organizations dedicated to that area, as well as research. Um, and speaking of research, we are recognized as one of the top public research universities in the country, as well as one of the top research universities in the world. Um, Undergraduate students do have many opportunities to pursue um, research as soon as their first year at Michigan, either through the Michigan Research and Discovery Scholars Program called MRADS or through our Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program, um, which we refer to as UROP. Uh, approximately 1,300 students each year engage in these programs. Living on campus can be a great part of the Michigan experience in traditional years, um, and about 97% of our first year students do choose to live on campus. We never mandate students to live on campus at any point during their time at Michigan, but we would love to see you there um, during your first year. We also offer 22 living and learning um, community programs for students who would love to find students who share similar interests to them. We do offer over 1,600 clubs and organizations on campus for students, which includes everything from student government to first generation engineers, music ensemble organizations, and club sports, just to name a few. Varsity athletics is also a really large part of our tradition at U of M. Um, we offer 29 division one athletic teams, over 20 intramural sports, and a storied tradition of championships um, on campus as well. 
Once you become a student at the University of Michigan, you'll have access to one of the largest living alumni communities in the world, which is 630,000 people strong. Um, you can see some of our most notable alums outlined on the screen, um, including former President Gerald Ford, um, CNN chief medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta, and Larry Page, the co-founder of Google. So we hope you learned a great deal about the University of Michigan in this short time today. Um, if you do have questions, go ahead and submit them at the bottom of the screen in the Q&A. Um, thank you for joining us and go blue. Great, thanks so much. Um, so there is a couple more minutes left in the sessions, um, and I did see a few questions come in to the Q&A chat. Um, just a reminder to the attendees, please make sure that you uh, make note of who your question is for, what school. Um, there was one question that didn't say, so just an FYI. Um, but I do want to pose a question to um, the at the panelists here with us today. Um, but let me just share my screen super quick. Uh, and then here is just a little snapshot of the rest of the events happening today. Um, we have 13 overall. So there's this session as well. And then there is a following one as well. Um, so the question that I have for you guys is give an interesting or fun fact about your school and then you can just answer it in the same way that you presented and you don't have to share your screens or anything. Oh, I guess I go first. Yep. Um, well, um, just I, I guess this would relate to a lot of um, students who are looking for a Catholic university. Uh, Sacred Heart is actually the first ever lay led um, university, which basically means we were, uh, we don't have priests and um, nuns in, on our campus. We are a Catholic university, um, uh, but we are the first lay led. Awesome. Uh, and then the next school is um, Evergreen State College. Hi, one fun fact about Evergreen is because we're in the Pacific Northwest where we're surrounded by natural beauty, mountains, trees, and things like that. We have a program called the TOP program, T-O-P, which stands for the outdoor program that gets students outdoors, where you can go uh, climbing on mountains, like what are they, the hiking, I guess, um, or paddle boarding and kayaking and all that kind of stuff. So get out there and enjoy. Awesome. And next up, University of Alabama Huntsville, in Huntsville, excuse me. Um, I would say a fun fact about us is that we do have tons of, co I mentioned this in my presentation, but we do have tons of co-ops and internship opportunities for students. Um, and so one of the coolest places I feel like that a lot of people do get internships and co-ops with is the Space and Rocket Center because it is right down the road from us. Um, so regardless of your major, there's tons of different opportunities for you to get involved with, but um, I feel like it's a pretty cool thing to be able to partner with some of the um, businesses that are around. Awesome. And then um, Rollins College. Yeah, so I'd say a fun fact is that we have a high percentage of our students who go abroad, 77% at any point during their time at Rollins, um, and we want it to be accessible and affordable. So any aid you receive goes with you um, when you go abroad. Great. And then Illinois Institute of Technology. Yeah, I would say a fact about our university, uh, we do have accelerated master programs. So if you wanted to get your master's degree for one additional year, you definitely can do so, as well as some dual admission programs. Um, if you wanted to pursue like uh, your BSDO or BSJD, um, anything similar to that, uh, we're partnered with some professional pro uh, professional colleges in Chicago. Um, so it would just be right up there. Just take the train up there. Awesome. And then finally, University of Michigan. Um, so I, I would say that ours is a little bit sillier of a fun fact, but um, one of the things that students love about the University of Michigan, especially coming from the South, is um, the size of the squirrels on our campus. And we actually have two clubs on campus. One is the Squirrel Feeding Club. So they're dedicated to feeding the squirrels to seeing if they can get them to mutate to a new species of squirrel. Um, and then there is a group of students who thinks that is inhumane. So it's, there is the Not Feed the Squirrel Club. Um, and so they actually duel against each other on campus. That is rather interesting. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for sharing. Um, I do just wanna share my screen one final time, um, just to say a quick thank you to our presenters, as well as thank you attendees for joining. Um, when you do close out of this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. 
Um, and we appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted tonight, like I shared just a few moments ago. So please be sure to sign up for any additional sessions. And then in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as the other sessions that happen throughout this evening. Um, so if you have any final questions, um, shoot them in the chat. And then if you, um, uh, excuse me, panelists wish to put your contact information in the chat as well, uh, then please do so. Thanks everybody and have a great evening.